book review on a video. This time, Silkly Sanna by Tom Eglon, uh, which I think has been published in English as Circle's End or something like that. I had a hard time finding it on Amazon today, but I did find um, The Guardians of the Covenant, which is a sequel to this, so presumably the first book must have been translated. Um, if you're interested, take a look. Uh, it's been bought by All and Sundry, so presumably there must be an English edition out there. Um, it's an audiobook, uh, published in 2005. The book was originally published in 2001. Uh, it's read by Eric Hivyu, the actor. And just to get that out of the way, it was pretty well read. He has a good voice for reading, definitely. Um, it wasn't perfect. He should have been allowed a second read-through, I think, because uh, he did make mistakes sometimes, so with the emphasis on words and pronunciation of certain words, and certainly his English pronunciation left something to be desired. Uh, there's a number of English words in the text because um, a lot of the characters are foreigners, and he you fucked up quite a few of those, unfortunately. Uh, but generally, well read. I would uh, listen to more books read by him. Uh, but as for the book itself, I have to say that I am disappointed. This is the second book I've read by Eglon. The first one was uh, one of his first books, uh, which was okay but not that great. And my friend who led it to me said, well, um, it's not as good as the later books, certainly nowhere near as good as Circle's End. So I was hoping for bigger things than this. Everyone told me that, because uh, this is basically the Da Vinci Code, except in Norway and not with those secret agents from the Vatican and shit. Um, this is earlier though. This was published before uh, the Da Vinci Code, so this is not a ripoff. Uh, it's, if you can call this original, it's more original, slightly. Uh, but anyway, everyone told me that this book would be a better version of the Da Vinci Code, and was it better? Yes, this book is better than the Da Vinci Code, but that is taking into account the fact that the Da Vinci Code has all the literary qualities of toilet paper, so that I almost fail to see how any book could be worse. Uh, so that's not really a compliment. And generally speaking, I was disappointed by this. The story is, uh, well, it is the Da Vinci Code. Uh, at an archaeological dig, some weird artifact is found, uh, basically a golden box, uh, which uh, some mysterious archaeologist, or whatever he is, he steals it and rushes off. And our hero, Bjorn Berta, who is uh, um, the controller or overseer or whatever at the stake, he thinks it's terrible that they're stealing the artifact, so he decides to chase them and steal the box back and all kinds of weirdness uh, issues from that. It's an okay plot, it's entertaining as far as that goes, but I just feel like... Well, for one thing, and this is my problem, I realize that, uh, this is all about Jesus, his life, if, did he even die at the crucifixion, did he escape and flee to Europe and become the founding fathers of royal dynasties or whatever, Mary Mary Magdalene. Um, I think personally that that is totally fucked up retarded uh, to even care about that. To me, people who genuinely care about the family life of Jesus Christ, and who do research, and who think that this is like fascinating and important. To me, that's like people who are obsessed with the Lord of the Rings to the point of going to night school to learn Elvish, uh, or people who get married and have the ceremony done in Klingon. I mean, it's to my mind, this caring about this kind of thing is just as pointless and retarded as that. So. I wasn't very interested in the basic premises of the plot, and of course that is a problem, but I realize that is mostly my problem. But I just, I wasn't convinced by this. I thought that the dialogue wasn't very good. Um, the main character, Bjorn Berta, who is uh, the narrator, first person singular narrator, he, um, he's supposed to be, I think, like my age, like early to mid thirties or thereabouts. Uh, relatively young man from Oslo, and he talks in this weird old-fashioned way. He says, uh, this is a Norwegian thing, but he just uses phrases that I personally um, 
It just sounds really weird to me. Han säger inte jämt, han säger pike, han säger inte type, han säger limbon och sånting som bara hörs helt dumt ut och han snackar också. När han snackar om föräldrar så brukar han helt konsekvent mamma och pappa. Eh, inte när han snackar om direkt tala där så väl normalt men när han snackar om att faran så är död så säger han inte jag blir lejman och farmin död, jag blir lejman av pappa död. Och för mig så är det egentligen helt det hörs väldigt märkligt ut. Uh, I think that a lot of his dialogue is he's supposed to be smart, he's supposed to be uh, he's an archaeologist too and uh, you know, sleuthing to discover the truth behind this mystery, but I think that he he's not convincing as that at all. He he's pretty annoying. The book is kind of repetitive because he's an albino and he's obsessed with his own albinism and he brings that up every possible chance he gets. I mean, it's just shut up about it already. Uh, and he sounds so stupid sometimes. I mean, he's supposed to be a fascinating, intriguing character, but to me, I wasn't interested in him at all. And in certain scenes, he seems to be borderline retarded. I, I don't get the fascination with this character at all. The characters generally, I think, aren't that believable. Some are superfluous, like the character of Diane. I have no idea what she's doing in the book. She could just been cut out entirely. Um, and overall, I think that what this book, the problem with this book is that Egelon, he suffers from an inability to kill his darlings. It's the impression that I get. There's a lot in this book that could have been excised. Uh, things that, or a lot, but there are things in this book, such as uh, certain characters, that I personally I don't see the point of them, and there are, especially in the language, there's a lot of phrasing and a lot of expressions that I get the impression he just really likes to use. He thought it was so cool when he wrote this, and he didn't want to get rid of it, uh, and he kept it in even though it's not to the benefit of the text. Uh, so it's a fine piece of bland, pointless entertainment, I guess, but I. I was disappointed because this really is, it's, I guess, a step up from the Da Vinci Code in that the conspiracies don't seem that randomly far-fetched and it's not that badly written, but um, to say that this book is heaps better is uh, completely an exaggeration, fabrication. Uh, I was not impressed with this book at all. Um, the plot was okay. But to be honest, wasn't that clever. Certainly not very original. Uh, the character is not believable. Uh, a lot of scenes, or a number of scenes, that I felt were just uh, could have been cut out. Just with this love interest thing, seemed pointless. Seemed like a very Hollywood thing to do, just force some kind of love interest in there. Uh, the language isn't that great. I. I guess I'll be reading more of this guy just because he's supposed to be so good and I want to find out what people see in him, but I will only do so, I think, if I can read him in audio because I would have actually kind of kicked myself if I had spent a few hours of my time doing nothing just reading this book. Uh, as I did, uh, I think, with the Da Vinci Code, which I also, fortunately, listened to on audiobook. Um, bestseller, supposed to be fantastic. But no, not fantastic. Really not fantastic at all, unfortunately.